Welcome home, neighbors. This is the Leichner family from Vancouver, Washington, owners at the Grand Californian and Alani, and you're listening to My DVC Points. Parents and the children could have fun together. Please board quickly and safely. Our monorail will be departing momentarily. Welcome to the My DVC Points podcast. Join the conversation as DVC members share their stories, personal preferences, and magical memories. Your reservation is confirmed, your fast passes are booked, pull up on the yellow strap because our journey into the magic of membership is about to begin. Now, here's your host and curator of magical stories, Chad Pennycuff. Welcome home, neighbors. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at DVCResaleMarket.com. You are in the market to buy or sell a DVC contract, and you want to save a boatload of money over buying direct from Disney? I got great news for you. DVC Resale Market is the 500-pound gorilla in this space. They have more listings than anybody else that's out there on the market. Every single person that's on their staff is a former Disney Direct Guide. So you can get that Disney level of service without having to pay the Disney price tag. You can pick up a contract from an existing member right where their family left it off and they can pass the baton on to you so that your family can keep making magical memories and all the joys of Disney with saving a lot of money on DVC. DVCresellmarket.com. Let them know you heard about them here on the My DVC Points podcast. In today's show, we are doing a member interview, and I'd like to welcome Christy Biondo to the show. How are you doing today, Christy? Oh, very good. Thanks, Chad. Thanks for joining us today. Tell me a little bit about your Disney infatuation here, and because the people aren't seeing this live, because it's an audio one, but you've got quite the impressive ear collection behind you in this. Yeah, I sure do. We might need a, a lot more than an hour to talk about my Disney infatuation, but try to keep it as brief as possible. Yeah. Um, so how did it all start for you? So I only went to Disney. I say only. I was lucky to go, but I went once during my childhood. And then the real, I would say the real, my interest in Disney really kicked up a notch in college. I started to go when we'd go down to Florida for spring break, we'd make a pit stops at Disney. It started there. And then once I graduated and started working full time, I started doing annual trips while living in New York. At that point, obviously in college, it was the low budget hotels that we would stay at. So we hit the all-star music, all-star sports. I guess as my progression in the work environment it started to move along and so did my income and then so did the hotels that I stayed at. So over the years, then I kind of graduated to the moderate level. I stayed at Caribbean Beach. I had a conferences at Coronado, worked my way up and then started to stay at the deluxe category. And it's similar to flying. Once you fly first class, you don't want to go back. And it's kind of the same thing, I think, with the deluxe resorts. Once you get a, a taste of them, it's hard to go back to the regular. So Christy, I, yeah. I just, I, I just can't do cheerleader camps and Brazilian yeah. tour groups anymore. I like, no, no, I'm like, yeah. I'm gone. I'm spoiled. Okay. I I'm, <laughs> can't happen. Like once you've gone yeah. DVC and it's just, the crowd is different. We're more chill as DVC members. It's yeah. It's just a completely different vibe at Disney in the resorts. I don't know how else to. Like I've, I've said before that the air is different. It's just like, it's a different vacation when you compare this to the values. It's, it's just not even a, a close. Yeah. And I think with my experience, if, uh, there might've been a time or two when we were at a, a value resort where there was a convention going on, maybe the cheerleading one, very crowded, very noisy. So the vibe of the deluxe is, is a lot different. And I have been going for years and years. I have many family members that are DVC. I regret not buying in the early days because I went for about 20 plus years going on my own without having the DVC, just mainly because I wanted the flexibility and being able to cancel and, and thinking, oh, it's not worth it. And now I have conversations with my cousins who bought in the early days and we laugh because they got contracts for like $50 a point and they had like free passes for years. And I look at all the money that I spent before buying the DVC. And I realized, you know, what a knucklehead I was not buying it back then. <laughs> yeah. So what year did the light bulb finally click in for you and you finally bought your first contract? Well, 
very late in the game. I think it was around the time, maybe around COVID. I lost my, I mean, I moved, if my background is I was from New York City. I moved to Las Vegas in 2014. So then I started going to Disneyland. That was the first time I went to Disneyland was in 2014 when I moved here. And then that became my primary park. When I first moved, the hotels were not that expensive. So I started going there to, to Disneyland and then COVID hit and lost my magic key. They canceled everyone's. And so once Disney World reopened, I decided, okay, I'm going to get my annual pass from Disney World and start going there. And the prices were very expensive. Once things started opening, the prices were very, very expensive for the hotel. So I decided to buy direct. And then when I did the math, it was like I was going to get the extra points because of the way that my use year fell. Mm-hmm. So it was like I was going to get the benefit of having like basically double points for, for that year. And I said, okay, I'm going to save a significant amount of money. Because at that point, I think the rates, for, I, bought, I bought Polynesian. They were going for like the, for the week I wanted to go, it was like a thousand dollars a night. So that, when I did the math, took out a big chunk of how am I going to get this money back? I thought it was a good value at that point, even though it was more expensive buying a existing resort direct because it was my first one. I wanted to make sure that it was a direct contract initially just to got, get got that. that so you bought direct. sold out Polly at like 200 mm-hmm. and something a point. And- yes. Mm -hmm. But I can see your thing. And just let me explain this to the listener, Mm -hmm. the whole double points buying direct thing. It really doesn't technically happen. What happens is, let's say you buy a December use year, but you buy it in October or November. You're going to get the existing year points like everybody does. But then as soon as December hits, you have a whole nother set of points. And when you buy direct, you can always bank your initial set of points. Like even if you buy the last day of your use year. Mine is February. So if I bought a new contract on January 31st, they would allow me to bank those points. And And you don't have to pay the dues, I believe, right? I didn't think I had to pay the dues on those, uh, that set of points that they were giving me. They're prorated is is the way that works. Yeah. Yeah. So when you only have a few days left, you're basically paying. Yeah. So on my example, if I were to buy a February use year on January 31st, I would pay one 365th of mm-hmm. the dues because I owned it for one day of the, the use year. And, and that's what I would pay for the dues. And so, yeah, buying right before your use year starts direct is always, always, always a good thing because A, you're not leaving a set of points on the table and B, you're paying prorated dues. And it's like getting double points because you can instantly bank them and start off with double. Like it's, it's, it's glorious. It's beautiful. So, okay. So yeah. you ended up buying the direct points from there. And it sounds like add on itis hit pretty hard here because you were like yeah, my actually. first contract. And <laughs> 20, I, think it was, I think it was around 2020. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and also during that time is like we were all locked up. Yes. And we couldn't spend money on anything. So right. people had a little bit of extra cash if you were able to be gainfully employed during that time. Mm-hmm. And that kind of like jacked with the economy. And I get it. Right. So you you end up buying this contract and and then what ended up happening? Like we we went from poly to. Well, I bought the minimum amount of points to get the blue card. So at that time it was 125. So I was grandfathered in at 125, but that's not really enough points to do the trips that we would, we were going pretty often. I think at that point. Yeah, that's like three, four It was the only thing to do. I mean, most things were closed. And so we started going like from, I'm from the West coast, but we started going about probably like four times a year. So, I mean, that barely got me a week. So the, and then Polly is not, I love the Polynesian, but it's not, it's not my favorite place to stay mainly because of the location. We're not MK people. We like to go to Epcot a lot and Hollywood studios. So I preferred Crescent Lake, but the beach club was very, I thought that was very expensive to, to buy that one. So and it has a much shorter year. So I was looking at the long-term projection because it's expiring in 2042. I didn't opt to buy Beach Club. So then I kind of just sat on the sidelines and I always thought, well, eventually Disneyland will be my primary park at some point in the future. I knew in the pipeline, they were going to build a new hotel. So I always had plans to add when they built a new hotel there. But when the Grand Floridian went on sale, I decided that Even though that's not my favorite location, long-term, I felt that was a very good contract to buy direct with incentives because it's a flagship property. The dues are the lowest. 
very easy to rent given its location. And then it was also part of the existing Grand Floridian. So I wouldn't have to worry about the resale restrictions on that one. So when that went on sale, I was like one of the first buyers. I got the luggage set, which I thought was really nice. And that was my second contract. And then once I stayed at the Grand Floridian, and that was one of the few that I hadn't stayed at before, just because like I said, I'm not an MK person. But when I had my first stay there, then I realized, oh, I actually really like this. This is nice for a resort, like a resort only stay where mm-hmm. we're not doing so much at the parks, but we really love the restaurants there. You uh, gotta love being on the monorail. Like, come on. Oh, like- yeah. Yeah, the monorail is nice, but we, we're walkers in my family. So we're like, we're, we're New Yorkers at heart. So we, we like to walk and the Crescent Lake resorts give us that option. But they did open up that walking path. That was a big deal to be able to walk from the Grand Floridian to the Magic Kingdom. So that was very good. Um, yeah, you could technically walk to Bay Lake Tower if you really wanted to get your steps in. Yeah, yeah. And you could walk to Polly. So you just can't do a full circle around it, but you can... You're kind of halfway between, so you could walk either way if you if you really want to walk. I mean, I'm taking the monorail. I'm lazy. I ain't, yeah. going, I ain't going to hide that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hear you. But see, we really like Citrico's. That's what, that's one of my favorite restaurants, Narcoozies. I haven't been to Victorian Albert's. I think it was closed like the first couple of times I stayed there and it hadn't reopened yet. But that's that's on my list. That's one of the things that eventually I will get to. But yeah, so that that so then I had the, the Grand Floridian and I was doing okay. and And then Disneyland finally went on sale and I bought the Disneyland. I bought 200 points at Disneyland just because I thought like with the extra incentive discounts, it made more sense to to go up to the 200 level. And I still have not stayed there yet. <laughs> I haven't stayed there yet. So, um, oh my gosh. Every you time I go, yeah. And well, you're I keep so on getting, yeah, I know, but I keep on getting, I guess kind of lucky in a way. I mean, I, I, I book a stay and then I end up getting Grand California. And so it switches over, like I'll do a wait list or in it, it seems to be coming through. So, but knock on wood, next week might be my, my first day. I did book, I have to do a college tour. My daughter's off to college next year. So we are touring UC Irvine next week and we are staying Friday and Saturday night. And then the following week, we're going to be staying for Star Wars night for a night. So, so yeah, hopefully that just I sounds odd get to me to go to Disneyland, but I'm like, okay, you're Vegas. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's it's like, a, yeah, that's super, super close. It's yeah. What is it? A half hour flight or something crazy like that? Oh, the flight's like, yeah, it's like maybe 30 minutes, 35 minutes. So the drive, it's about three and a half. So the drive's not bad. Yeah. At least coming in this direction for us in Vegas, we're going against traffic. People are coming to Vegas for the weekend. And so for us, we're going the opposite direction. So it's, it's pretty good traffic wise. Yeah, yeah, that's so, awesome. So that, that got me to my Disneyland contract. And then this is where I, I thought I was okay and I had plenty of points, which I, I probably did. <laughs> and I thought, okay, that's it, no more. And then the Grand Floridian went on sale again and had crazy incentives. I mean, really, really good. And I waited. I was like, I'm going to wait, 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 wait. I was thinking about it, torturing myself. And the last day, I think it was, I don't know, it was like September 11th or September 13th, something like that. I bought them on the last day. I added another, I think it was 150 or 200 contracts at a very discounted price with the magical beginnings buyback. So, and oh I'm my happy gosh. I did. That Grand Flow blowout sale. I don't know that we'll ever see something like that again. Yeah. But it's, it's like that sale was so good they spoiled us because it's just like everybody is now going like buy and direct, like. No, yeah. I want that grand flow sale that they had on blowing out those points. And yeah, I think the net price was maybe, I don't know, like 166, I think, or 168, something like that. It was really, really yeah, good. Yeah, if you bought enough route. points and got a sweet yeah. incentive and then sold back yeah. at $22 mm-hmm. a point at the time. And yeah. it it really made sense to like tack on points there. Yeah. Because even if you're not a grand right. flow person, the dues, baby, the dues. Right. Right. And then all of these brides love renting the grand flow. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the Disney always- brides will like snap up your, your rentals at 11 months <laughs> and they're planning yeah. that Disney wedding out in advance. So you will rent them at 11 months to Disney yeah. brides that are right there. That They want the whole Victorian white thing that goes with it. The wedding chapel is right there. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a glorious thing. I, I, if I was buying again, I would go back in and that would be one deal that I would have wish I would have taken. Yeah. It is is that deal yeah. right there. 
that and buying so, Animal Kingdom when I first started in 2017, when it was down at like 68 bucks a point or something insane, like right. resale. And th th yeah. Yeah, those are some things that I wish I would have pulled the trigger on and didn't. But I've done really well. I, I can't complain. I, I, I cannot complain. Yeah, no, I think that that was a really good one for me. Because even in a year like this year, when I'm traveling a lot and really busy. If I ever need to to rent them out, like you said, it's it's easy to rent them. And because the dues are so low, you're going to get more net net money back when you do in the an event that you do have to rent them. And then I, if I if I ever want to rent them and not stay there, then I can use the funds to get another reservation that I want. But I do like staying at Boardwalk a lot. So I've been using those points mainly for Boardwalk one bedrooms. And I seem to have no problem getting Boardwalk one bedroom at the seven month mark. I mean, my last several stays have all been at the Boardwalk and it seems like they have a lot more availability for one bedrooms. Mm -hmm. One yeah. bedrooms are the last thing to sell out in DVC. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a one bedroom person, it's good news for you right now. It's twice the cost of a studio is the way it works mm -hmm. out on the point charts. But if you don't mind paying that and you want to be a one bedroom person, you got a lot of flexibility if you're right on it at the seven month mark. Right. Well, I travel a lot with my sister and now my niece has been coming too. So I'll take the bedroom with my kids and then they'll take the pull out which is now a Murphy bed. So now it's, it's good. And we like having the laundry. So then I have to pack less because many of my trips, I'm, I'm going to Florida first and then I'm going to New York after and then back to Vegas. So I have to travel with warm weather clothes, cold weather clothes. So I don't want to like overpack my suitcases. So it's great to have the laundry. So I really like the one bedrooms for that. Oh yeah. That does work yeah. out well. And mm -hmm. sounds like you're offering free rooms to your family for the couch and like, who would want to take you up on that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Like, hey, I'm, I'm having a one bedroom. Me and my kids, we got the master, but you know, you can have the Murphy bed and it's a Murphy bed. Not Disney. I'm in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I could definitely yeah. see how that works out well with your sister and family and, and all that yeah. kind of fun stuff. So yeah. Yeah. now did you ever add on at Boardwalk? Cause like you love it. Boardwalk. Like, <laughs> yes. As a point. matter of fact. <laughs> so then I continued this trajectory of going crazy with add-on-itis and I bought Boardwalk resale contract. Awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah. So I wanted to have at least one where I know if it's a, if I need to book something and I want to book a studio on a small trip out for myself that I'd have the ability to do it. Now it is very, very hard to book the standard studio, because it's so low, the points, mm -hmm. at, even at the 11 month mark, what I've discovered is people pretty much walk that reservation all year. But I mean, it's not that much different for it for the regular studio. So no, it's really yeah. not. It's in yeah. Boardwalk and, and Beach Club and all of those like 2042 points. They're like moderate on the point charts. They're not the lowest that's out there, but mm -hmm. they're not insane like Grand Flow and Bay Lake and Riviera and Alani, like we yeah. saw point inflation, like you wouldn't believe in just the point mm -hmm. charts. Yeah. So you can still go to boardwalk and it's a reasonable point chart, at least up until 2041, 2042. We don't know what's going to happen, but I imagine the point charts are going to go up astronomically when that happens. Right. Right. That's why Risa, I think if you like, for me, it was important to be direct just to be able to to have the blue card, to have the flexibility without the restrictions. But I think I probably would have been okay. Like if I didn't get that deal on the Grand Floridian direct, maybe I would have bought more resale because we do like staying in the boardwalk. It's not a challenge at the seven month mark to use the points for the one bedroom. And then it's just, you can buy the points so much cheaper and then mm -hmm. stay at one of those resorts. So it's a good play for people, it, depending on the resort you want to stay at, right? Not yeah. all of them are, are very available at seven months, but like you said, one, one bedroom, pretty easy to get. Yeah, so where all have you stayed on point so far, Christy? Boardwalk, Beach Club, Grand Floridian, Polynesian. Oh, we heard, Grand yeah. Grand Cal, Wilderness Lodge, not Wilderness, what is that one called? Boulder Ridge. No, not Boulder Ridge, but Copper, Copper Creek. Creek. I guess it's called. I, I mean, I, I've been going for years and years. So back in the day, that was just Wilderness Lodge. But yeah, Copper Creek and soon to be the Disneyland Hotel. I mean, I that'll be next week for me. And that's really, oh, you said on points. Okay. Yeah, I've never, I mean, I've stayed at the Animal King. I've stayed at most of the resorts many times, just not on okay, points. Okay, not on points, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Got yeah, it. I think the Got only it. one that I have not stayed in is the Riviera. I think it's just the Riviera at this point. 
I've been to Arlani, but that was years ago and that was cash days. But yeah, so so Riviera is on my list. I'd like to eventually stay there. But oh, and then the I've not been to like some of the hotels like Pop Century because those were they were not around during my value days. Yeah, they were yeah, newer. Pop's a, a, a new, newer thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. When, when we really start going way back and way back in there, Pop wasn't a thing. Yeah, I, I completely yeah. get that. Right. Yeah. And you can always ride the Skyliner over there when you're at Boardwalk. And it's it's a great place to go walk around and check out the retro theming and all the themings of the different buildings. But I don't want to stay there. I, I have stayed there. I have a when I was buying my house down here and shopping for that, I would eventually see Pop Century pop up on Hotwire for about eighty nine dollars a night. Mm. And I thought that was a decent deal because you're buying it on Hotwire and you're looking at this and you're seeing free bus service to MCO. And back when we had Magical Express, oh, yeah. you could look at that and go, OK, I know that's a Disney hotel because you don't know what it is, but you can then compare amenities and go, yeah, that's a Disney hotel because it's in the Disney bubble. Right. And so that's how I would end up doing that. But I, I've since quit looking for that because I, I have no need for it now. But. That was always an option as well. And occasionally I do see in the interwebs that pop and all sports pop back up on hot wire from time to time. So if you're out of points and you're looking, that's a really good thing to come back in and, and check for and just do your super sleuth and compare all the amenities and all of that. And you, you're pretty good shot that it's a Disney hotel because Disney does put excess inventory on hot wire. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what is left on your DVC bucket list then? Like what is like the big trips or the journeys and the adventures that you're trying to cover here? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, a grand villa, I've never stayed at a grand villa. So that's something that eventually I want to do. And I mentioned I have multiple family members that have DVC contracts too. So we, we have been taking trips where we all go together and there's lots of us. So I think it'd be really fun maybe to do a, to do a holiday, like a holiday week one year, maybe whatever it is, Thanksgiving and just get the grand villa have the holiday, and then be able to do all of our holiday parties while we're there as well. The Riviera, I mean, I toured that Grand Villa. It is beautiful. I would like to stay there, but not just for like maybe one night there. I think if it's like the big wish list trip, it'd probably be the Grand Floridian Grand Villa with my oh, extended yeah. family with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be awesome because it's essentially yeah. a four bedroom with the media room. Right. And... They don't call it that, but it's essentially that because there is another Murphy bed couch into that media room, which could act as a fourth bedroom. I could definitely see that happening for like a big family gathering. And I've heard of people hosting their baby showers there and oh, yeah. bridal parties and all kinds of other things. It, it's yeah. quite the place to host an event if you're looking to host an event here at yeah. Disney. And that's the, the little secret is you can use points to book a grand villa or an event two nights and have it during the day for an event room where you just get a tiny room for a, f a couple hours in a day at a Disney convention center. And it's 10 grand. Like it's, that's mm -hmm. the little secret here of DVC and using that for like parties or grand villas or meetings or meetups or something along those lines. Now we are having a meetup at a grand villa and villas at Disneyland hotel. N Nick on our team was just gracious and invited the whole team and said, we're going to host a mighty VC points meetup, but that's like some major points that he's dropping. And I don't have those kind of points. Maybe if I banked and borrow and want to blow them out, but <laughs> I would probably knowing me, I would rent the points and pay the dues. So if I had that many extra points, but we yeah. do have a meetup coming up in October. If you guys are wanting to come in and check out a grand villa and hang out there for a while with us. So are you coming to that one? I know we talked about Is that about Gina's it. birthday? Is that the Gina birthday no, trip? Gina's birthday is here in Walt Disney World. That's like okay. two weeks after this one. Yeah. This one is for Columbus Day weekend. And Oh, yes, I am. That's the one in Disneyland. Yeah, I have that booked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. I, re I reserved that weekend. I have three nights held in Disneyland. I have so many trips this year. It's hard to keep track of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. It's Yeah. Mm-hmm. People think we're weird, but it's like once you get into the DVC system and you get your annual passes, then it's kind of like it's the annual pass is the gateway drug to adonitis is what I say. It's it's right. that's kind of my buzzword phrase, because you get the annual pass and in order to get more value out of your pass, you need to go more and in order to go more. You need more points. And it's just this like self speeding circle. Right. Yeah. And then you yeah. end up becoming friends with people that are in DVC mm -hmm. and then we start planning trips together. And yeah, it's yeah. kind of a fun And then you thing. discover the cruises and then you're really in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> where we're at crazy. now. So yeah, that's, that's where, where we're at, at now. <laughs> yeah. 
And I'm actually going on the 11 night Mediterranean cruise this summer. So it's going to be a big one. I'm looking forward to it. I'm a little jealous. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Right. I'm a little jealous, but uh, getting my family over to Europe in the summer, we've been trying to pull it off for like the last three years. And it looks like 2025, we're going to get the Disneyland Paris one to happen. We were going to pull it off this year. And then we found out the Olympics were in Paris this summer. And we're like, Ooh, we ain't touching that city. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Like, I just saw they put it, they put the 11 night one. Now they just discounted it. The 25%. They that's, that's recent. Wow. So it's still time, Chad. <laughs> still time. Yeah. About, yeah. 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 We'll have to see. I, Ooh, that one would be tough because my summer is pretty well booked with coming to like Alani and my family's going to finally get to stay at our home resort at the villas at Disneyland hotel and then Hollywood, universal Hollywood. My son really wants to take my, his mom to go do Mario. So we're all going to do that. It was like, I, I took him last summer and the whole time he's like, I can't wait to bring mom here. And I'm like, well, let's enjoy it with dad. Okay. While we're here, buddy. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I have a lot of, like a lot of weekends booked, but I, I'm not sure which, if my daughter's going to school in Florida or California yet. So I'll know in a couple of weeks and then I'll be able to finalize everything. So I'm like, if she were touring UF next week, so if she ends up going to UF, then we'll keep a lot more of the Florida trips. If she ends up going to UCI or UCSD, then we'll keep more of the California trips. We're we're just trying to, I was trying to be very strategic with my bookings this year and I hold everything. And some weekends it's like I booked Disneyland and I booked Disney World for the same weekend because I just wasn't sure where we're going to be. Yeah, well, cancel 30 plus days in advance and and you're good. You'll make somebody's wait list happy as well. So it's, there's, this is the flexibility of the points. This is all within our rules. That's that's, that's, right. (laughs) I've got a lot of, a lot of points right now. So, Yeah. So Christy, how has like life changed? We talked about the flexibility of the points. Are you coming more often now as a DVC member? Like we, we just talked about, is that kind of like an identifiable trend here or? Definitely. It's like you said, once you, you have the points, so then you get the pass. And then when you have the pass, you're like, you want to use it. So definitely a lot more before I would do, I mean, I would do like maybe two it would be I'd book the trip to Disney World on my way to New York when I'd come home for a holiday. So I do that first and then go to New York. And But now I'm doing a lot, a lot more trips. And it also helps that I have a lot of family members that, that have DVC as well. So I'll coordinate with different cousins. And, and, and then it's really fun. And we do like to go to the festivals. But for having the Disneyland points now and the price of the Magic Key going up significantly the last several years... In order to get my money's worth on the pass, you really need to go multiple yeah, times. Yeah, you, you have to go. Like yeah. 1600 bucks now for right. Disneyland is really steep. It is. It's, I mean, and then I, I think I'll, I'll keep my pass, but I think I, if my daughter goes to school in Florida, I might just downgrade hers to the lowest level one. But I do have a lot of tri- a lot of weekend trips for Disneyland, which is good. I can go. I mean, I could even just go one night. I can leave Saturday morning and get there at nine o'clock. If I take an early morning flight or drive early, spend the day and then come home the next day. So it's not a big deal. So I do have this summer a lot of either Friday, Saturday nights or just Saturday nights. It's, so I probably will spend a lot of, of weekends there. Yeah, definitely more trips. Yeah, definitely. If I live three hours from Disneyland, I would be going a lot more than I do now. And I, I still make it out there three, four times a year, which is barely enough to justify the cost of an annual key. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I'm, it's, it's iffy, right? Because yes. with me, Saturdays are my key day and I have to buy the top pass at Disneyland in order to get Saturdays. So it's like, it's really difficult. I tried the lower level pass at Disneyland when they, my pass got canceled during COVID. And then once they started reselling it, I bought the lower one and I'm like, okay, most of the summer is blocked out, but that's fine because they still had September and October. And then they started to like the following year, they cut down the days in September and October. So then I went to like the mid tier, I think it was the believe. And then, and then this past year, the weekend we go in October, they like that was even blocked. So then I had to upgrade. And so this year I just said, you know what? I'm just going with the highest level because it doesn't work out with all the different blockouts. So now I have the, the highest level one. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured out with Disneyland. Here in Walt Disney World, you can get away with the Sorcerer Pass, which is the DVC level one. If you don't want to come Christmas and Thanksgiving, though, and, yeah. and you're good. But I got to tell you, like... Easter week here was nuts, the extra nuts this week, it, it, this year, because it was just like crazy, 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 crazy busy with 
nobody having blackouts for Easter. So I don't know that they're going to be able to sustain that at that pass. They're probably going to have to block that out because it's they've got to do something with the crowds here at, at Easter because it is just crazy, crazy, crazy whispering. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I, I don't know what's going to happen there, but we'll you know, we'll have to see. I'll probably just edit this whole section out because I'm not liking where that's going. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I would say it's very, I mean, another benefit of having DVC at Disneyland is it's hard to get reservations on the magic key to make them. But when you are staying on property, you can almost always get a reservation, even if it's like a week before. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll add, like, for example, I might add Gina to my reservation so that she can book a reservation because otherwise the park is sold out unless you're staying there. So that's a big benefit. Now, I don't know if they're keeping reservations or they'll eventually going away, but for now, as long as they're still requiring them, it's a huge benefit to be able to stay on property. Yeah. Cause Disneyland, it's really hard to get a reservation and mm-hmm. Walt Disney world, not so much. And really we only need magic kingdom on Saturdays and Sundays. It's throughout normal times. I, I think just this first week they blocked out MK for a day. And said, hey, no park hopping to MK because its capacity is is running full. But that's like Easter week, okay? It's insanely high. That's the only time that's happened since they've put this back into it. And yeah. even then, it's really not hard to get a reservation here in Walt Disney World anymore. It's just more of a speed bump and a hassle than anything else. So I don't really know what it's buying for them other than they're making it more difficult to use your annual pass. Right, yeah. Well, like for me, it was two weeks ago, we had this last minute college tour come up. And so I looked, I said, okay, let me see if there's any availability. There was a room available, but then I'm like, oh, well then I'll go to the park. And I was able to book the reservation, even though it was sold out because I was able to book the hotel. Yeah. So that yeah, really that's... worked out great. I and mean, that was two weeks before. So. Yeah. That's a key benefit in Disneyland because they have went crazy with their reservation system over there. Mm-hmm. Like absolutely crazy with it. Yeah. And I don't know, like, so what I found is there, I mean, normally I'll reserve all my stuff out, book it out early. And then if I'm getting close, like this was a last minute reservation, there were no regular rooms left, but then there were a ton of like all different types of accessible rooms. So I was kind of like Googling around and seeing what the etiquette is. And it seemed for the most part, people feel if you're booking it like relatively close to the date and there's inventory in all of those, then it'd be okay to book. And this was, I think, a like a hearing accessible room, but there were tons of them and it was two weeks out. So no one, I think, otherwise is going to book those rooms at that point. So I picked up a room. Like, I don't think yeah. I would ever do that at like a seven month or 11, seven month mark. But if you're a few weeks away, at least I, I was asking around and it seemed to be like that's acceptable at that point. Yeah, th- that's kind of a, a thing that's out there. And I booked the hearing accessible rooms at Villas at Disneyland Tower before. And they didn't even put me in a hearing accessible room. There was, I, I asked, I'm like, what's special about this room? And they were like, oh, well, we didn't put you in one. You booked it, but we didn't put you in one. Cause yeah. And this know, is the first time I'm doing that. So I, cause I was hesitant. I was like, I don't want to take a room away from someone, but if you're like two weeks out and no one's taking that room, then, you know, it seemed okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, everybody has fair shot at all the rooms out there right. as well. And so I do not have a problem with it as well because our dues are the same as their dues. The same, you know what I'm saying? It's right. it, and they have a it, lot. I mean, they have a lot of rooms held for all different reasons. So there's, it's a it's a chunk of the inventory. Christy, do you have any other advice for somebody who's new on the fence? Because you're like me. You spent sounds like at least ten plus years on the fence for DVC before jumping in. And what advice would you give them, or would you give Christy of younger years about buying DVC? I think if you go, if you know you're a Disney person, you know you're a Disney person, you're going to be going. So I think if you do your your research and you know where you want to stay, and if you pick up a, a great incentive that's happening or a great resale contract, if you're not concerned about buying direct, then I, I think you should go for it. It's a, unlike other products, it's, it's easy to rent, it's easy to sell. And you just do your homework is what I would tell people and just make sure I always tell people I'm an accountant. So just don't get over your head in terms of what you could afford, be realistic in what you could afford. But for the most part, what I've seen is that unlike other timeshares, it's very easy to to sell. There's a robust resale market Mm -hmm. and it's easy to rent. And there are lots of different things that you can do with the dues. Now, I think DVC is a great product if you're a planner. I will tell people if you're not a planner and you're not going to put dates on your calendar and book at the seventh month mark and the 11th month mark, then it's more difficult. I mean, I've had some friends on the West Coast here and they're very last minute. And for them, 
didn't really work because they don't didn't like to plan up front. But if you're like me and I suspect like you, Chad, and we're planners and we put the dates on our calendars, it's it's an excellent, excellent product to have. Yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up is you have to be a Disney person and you mm -hmm. have to be going to Disney because let's ignore all this other noises about trading your points for cruises or all of this other stuff. Like if you're not going to stay at a Disney resort and a deluxe Disney resort on top of that, this just doesn't make sense. If you're one of those people that, because I don't regret not buying it for those 15 years or so, because I wasn't coming to Disney all that time. I wanted right. to, but mm -hmm. in my life at the time, I was setting in the foundations for all the finances and all that other stuff and paying off all the debt, including our house in Michigan. And like, you know what I'm saying? I, I just took care of business before I bought DVC. And then once it was a point where we looked down and, and Laura's like, why don't we go someplace? We need to start having some place to go and we need to get this thing moving. Okay. Then it, it started to make sense. And we made coming to Disney a regular part of our lifestyle. But okay. until then, it really didn't make sense to me. So I have no regret for not buying Beach Club when I looked at it at the final closeout sales when it was being sold direct because I know what I did with my money and my life during those years. And it set me up to really enjoy everything that I'm, I'm enjoying now. I, I wouldn't have been able to have a house in Florida, a house there and, and mm -hmm. points and being able to go to Alani and take cruises and all the other stuff had I not set the foundation ahead of time. Right. So I don't have any regrets over it. It'd have been nice to look back and go on paper, but I know what I did with the money and I don't really regret not buying it when I did. So I think that's some really, really, really good advice that you've got there. Mm -hmm. And I think your like your Disney experience evolves over time. I mean, I think even back to me, I started out going as basically as a college student on spring break. Then I had children, and so then I'd come with my kids. And now, like my older daughter's going off to college, and lately it's been more about going with my older cousins and having fun and going to the festivals. And now we're like using it in a different way. We go and some of them, they like the pool and they spend the day at the pool. And then we go out, we pick a nice restaurant at night and go to it and we'll walk around the Epcot. So we'll hit the different parties that go on. On the last trip, we did Sangria University at Coronado. We went to, we, we did Wicked Lair at the top of the contemporary. So it's a different kind of trip now, less about the kids and more about the adults. So I think if you have that mindset, oh, it's only gonna be during the stage when you have kids, you'd be surprised how it evolves over time. It really does. And as your kids get older and then they bring friends and mm -hmm. we've now, we're planning a trip with like Reagan's boyfriend. Like and Marianne saw a post that I did and cause she's a, a really good friend of the family. Marianne's a, a moderator in our Facebook group and a, co-host of our live show and like really involved in our community. And she was like, whoa, Reagan has a boyfriend now. Cause <laughs> when we bought in, she was like barely out of grade school. Like yeah. it, it's, I'm like, yeah, it, it, it happens. And so we were trying to get him to come to Alani with us this summer. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen on his end. Cause that's just a, a long way away for somebody to trust their kid to go. It's almost another country. It's half, at least a quarter yeah. of the way around the world. Right. I, I don't think his family was, 100% on board with that level of travel, but I'm like, okay, that's cool. We get it. We get it. Yeah. Okay, Christy, final question of today. It's my signature question. If Tinkerbell were to put 2,000 pixie dusted points into your account, that you could book anything in the DVC system with guaranteed availability. These are Tink's points, and she can pull some strings and get you booked. How are you using Tink's magical points? 2,000. 2,000. I'm going to do the, the Grand Villa at the Grand, the Grand Floridian. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. With my family. With your family. Yeah. That's because, awesome. I, because I know they love it so much and I love it. And it'd be just really nice for all of us to be together. So I think it would be so much fun. And if, it, if, if I don't know how much it is a night <laughs> because I've never stayed in a Grand Villa, but if we can get two of them, that would be even better. <laughs> they're they're Bring more people. The points. So yeah. You would have at least 10 nights in a grand villa. So nice. you could do five and five, right? Five and five. Yeah. I'd have two grand villas and it'd really be a party. And then we do it over a holiday. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us on today's show, Christy. All right. Thank you, Chad. And that puts another show in the books. I'd like to do a huge shout out of thanks to our sponsors over at World of DVC, including DVC Rental Store, Monera Financial, and DVC Resale Market. 
Also, a huge shout out of thanks to our Patreon supporters as well. If our show has been a blessing to your life and you have gotten something out of our free content and you'd like to give something back, please be sure to join us over there at patreon.com slash points. As always, thank you for tuning in and hopefully you found something in today's episode that'll help you go out there and plan something magical for your family. Ladies and gentlemen, please watch your head and step as you exit and take small children by the hand. Aw, oh, cheer up, Dad. You know I'll come back. Like DVC. My DVC Points is an unofficial Disney-inspired podcast created by fans of Disney Vacation Club. The thoughts expressed in this podcast are personal opinions and personal experiences. My DVC Points is not affiliated with Disney Vacation Club, the Walt Disney Companies, or any subsidiaries. We encourage listeners to contact their DVC guide or member services for official DVC policies.